Welcome to the channel. Thank you everyone for tuning in. So join me on today's video where I'll be doing my final part to my state of the collection. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but if you haven't, I'll put them on screen or I'll link them in the description. So I've already done two parts to it. So I've got a whole quartz collection. I've also got a micro brand slash AliExpress watches or homage watch collection, which I've done and covered. Um, and I think I included like dress watches in there as well or sports watches. So that contains all that. Now this part three is purely just say called divers. I've got a total of 16 diver watches uh, and no, I don't wear them all, but I knew pretty early on that I wanted to collect Seiko watches and you, anyone who's been a subscriber of the channel for a long time knows that I am a Seiko fanboy. Um, there's just something about Seiko, right? So to all of the Seiko fanboys, you know, you get what I'm talking about, and uh, which is why this collection isn't really excessive because um, I've seen some pretty big collections, to be honest, and a couple of subscribers I've been speaking to you guys are flying through the over the years, etc. And some of you guys have got over 300 watches right so what's this so anyway let's get cracking uh, i'm gonna try and keep it short and sweet i'll group them in a particular way and give you guys a couple of sentences on any of these uh and probably you and i think you've probably seen them all there's nothing kind of new here or something which i haven't seen but just to give you guys just more information into the state of the collection uh so let's go ahead and start off with the first bunch so let's start off with the first bunch to my left, I have the Seiko SKX-033, the SKX-007, SKX-013, and a mod. Yeah, so this is a 62 mass case by 54 watch. Uh, and of course, I've modified it. Um, and you know, you guys know why I featured this watch a couple of times already. Uh, and yeah, for me, 62 mass is such an iconic watch from Seiko. I think it's the first dive watch. Uh, and just that rudimentary, rugged basic simple dive watch look um, and i wear this actually quite often uh, and i really do enjoy wearing this watch and of course i love it etc so that is why that's in the collection coming back to these i mean these are i think some of the best vintage divers you can get um you know the skx 33 i think it's a 38 millimeter watch uh, is seiko's first true homage to the submariner you can see the 3pm crown uh, and this one i've kind of upgraded so i've put in a aftermarket domed mineral glass um, i changed the bezel insert on it because a lot of the examples you do get now are pretty beat up uh, and i've also fitted it with a aftermarket s crown and a seiko nh 36 movement just to give it you know that kind of newer feeling um, then i've got the skx 007 now this one was my first kind of watch that i modded uh and now I do regret it so anyone who does have skx 007 if it is standard please keep it standard i think those hold the most value but i think even looking back now in hindsight those looks when you see a totally stuck unabused really good quality example of skx 007 it does still have a lot of that vintage charm and appeal so i want to kind of set this back to original if i can uh it has been upgraded with nh36 it's got a sapphire glass those two things can stay but that white or silver chaptering needs to go also i want to get back the old handset on this uh yeah it's got aftermarket bracelet on there as well i mean it doesn't get worn but as a collector i think it's one of the things that should be in your collection if you are a collector like that. Um, then I've got the SKX-13. Um, you guys know why it's a 38mm, the smaller brother to the SKX-007. Again, it's had a new aluminium insert. Um, it does need a new dial, to be fair. This one is quite, you know, dated. It does have a fair bit of patina on there. The colours are faded, etc. But it also has an upgrade with NH36. So that's the first bunch of Seiko divers. Next up, we've got some entry-level stuff here. Um, I mean, this one, debatable if it's entry or not. I mean, the original turtle is, uh, but then this is the king turtle version with the manta ray dial. It's got a ceramic bezel insert. It's got NH36 sapphire crystal with a date mag. Um, yeah, which makes it kind of just above entry-level, if you will. Um, I mean, that's what people say, but according to me, it still is entry-level with just some upgraded specs. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the thing about this is the dial it's just amazing uh, seiko's dial game is so superior above so many other brands um, just take a look at just the shimmer the glossiness of the dial that texture and then you've got the shadows of those manta ray in there uh you know you don't see this from anybody else and it's one of the reasons why you know you have to rate seiko you have to give them that credibility um and this was a few years ago now i mean nowadays i don't really see that much from seiko they do have a lot of new dials and textures but i'm not really feeling much of the newer stuff but yeah this was awesome and to in fact i was so close to buying the seiko samurai manta ray version uh but just i thought i need to hold on because it's a bit ridiculous you know the size of the current collection but true entry level 
uh, Seiko Samurai. This is Gen 2, but like the first colorway that came out. Um, and then I've got the baby yellow fin tuna. And these watches for entry levels, they cannot be beat. You compare them like for like, they will, I think, uh, beat every other watch out there. These came out brand new at 400 pound. Um, automatic movement, mineral glass, so what? You know, aluminium bezel insert, so what? Just what they could achieve, ISO rated divers, actual dive watches, solid tool watches with a dive extension. Um, you know, everything about these watches is very solid, which is why a lot of people do really love Seiko and which is currently they are getting away from. You can see all the new releases are minimum 800 pound, which is a bit upsetting, a bit shameful really, but you know, that it is what it is uh, and the yellow fin uh, i did have a frost baby tuna but i went for the yellow fin tuna i don't know how smaller this is compared to a full-size tuna might be a mil or two but um yeah i really like this more so because of the yellow accents uh, and just that sort of more for tool watch look um this has got an aftermarket uh beads of rice bracelet i do have the original bracelet as well but yeah really solid watch um yeah it looks great as well love the bezel love the design more so and the samurai coming back to it you know again another reason why i love seiko is look how unique the case design is look how unique the watch design is uh, that knurled uh, barbell sort of crown uh yeah that's why you know this is seiko's heyday right so next up i've got some classics here uh the seiko monster you can't claim to be a seiko fan and not have any seiko monsters the funny story with a lot of these is majority of people hated them when they first came out uh, and it's something which over time you kind of grow to it um so yeah monsters very iconic and again a case which is very unique to seiko and it's how difficult is it for any other brand to say they've got you know really unique cases uh but yeah with this monster uh so with this monster selection i prefer the gen 2s and the gen 3s uh, or anything else so of course i've got the plain black with the orange accented hand for the gen 2 on this one then i've got the orange dial gen 2 and these do get worn now and then they're still in pretty good condition um and then i've got i've added this in because it's a mod it's a gen 1 dial all aftermarket of course it's on an aftermarket case this case if you want to know is from proxima so they do a really good uh samurai case um so good in fact this is an oem samurai bracelet and it fits it perfectly um and yeah this is a bit of a fun mod like a summary mod uh you know great tool watch you know sapphire crystal and dome crystal and then your illuminated uh, ceramic insert so a really fun watch to wear and then my latest acquisition this watch um if you kind of go back to some state of the collections i mentioned that i wanted to get this so uh, i've been fortunate enough to um whatever watch i've wanted it's kind of popped up now don't get me wrong i don't just spend um i really do take my time um a lot of these watches have been acquired over this four year period i've been doing youtube etc and this was the frost and this is the frost monster and i had my eye on this from the moment i saw this and i only got this in the back end of last year uh and i paid a really good price and some of these examples go up to a thousand pounds so i paid well below that uh and again fortunate enough to get it in you know really good condition i think it was like really close to new old stock um uh, and yeah really glad that i did this is definitely staying in the collection this frost dial from seiko is unmatched um and on, on a watch like this really good to have so that kind of completed my monster set if you will uh, and let's move on to some what they call mid-tier stuff so over the last couple of years seiko's mid-tier stuff has really kind of expanded uh they are really focusing on that if you take a look at some of the releases the captain willard reissue uh i think the slim turtle reissue the six to mass the spp 143 all these reissues um you know they've got one thing in common they're all expensive they all come in at 800 pound um but if we take a look at what was the starting point of the mid-range stuff which is watches like this perhaps maybe even a sumo uh but then this transocean um you know this for me it has the specs to justify that mid-range stuff i've done a full video on this guys you know how much i love this watch again very unique case um amazing right look at the facets look at the brushing on this uh case really good bracelet as well it is milled as well but i've fitted it with an aftermarket clasp um you've got this uh full ceramic zirconium i think uh, solid ceramic bezel um 
amazing dial, right? For a sunray dial, this, you know, blue, it's a thing called the Rising Sun colorway is, of course, stunning. And in that video, I do point out all the flaws. Don't get me wrong, this has a few of them. But um, when it does come to Seiko, uh, the, the looks kind of take it away. The flaws do not matter. They are so minuscule on the grand scheme of things. But just look at this you know extremely unique design and while these watches are big the majority of them are 46 mil this one is it fits my six and a half inch wrist bang on it's also got the die shield coating which gives you this sort of gunmetal look um but yeah a fantastic watch and again i didn't pay a lot for it uh but it, it's it just looks so good you definitely have to have one and again what other brand does designs like this uh, then the only really mid-range watch which did tickle my fancy was the SPB 185 and I think the 207. Uh, now the unfortunate thing about these watches, again, they came out too expensive. This special edition or limited edition was about £1,200 retail, which I can't justify that. And in fact, the video on this stating they're not worth £1,200 by no kind of stretch of the imagination. Um, and the SPB 185, I want to say the Steelmaster, um, again, great watch now the beauty with this is it's a downsized version of the mm 300 which makes it so significant and which is why i think this is the best reissue that they did in the lineup or in the current lineup um they wear so amazingly well uh beta dive watches uh you know it, it is a garter dive watch i gotta say um looks great um the sizing is the most important thing the comfort is amazing as well i think it's like a 48 log to log um, 42 millimeter uh, diameter um and awesome right milled clasp as well on there um and that's all you want right so i really love this colorway uh, i bought the green one first and then i ended up getting a steel master just because while they're the same it looks very different this one you know who doesn't like a dark green and gilt combination issue here is i think the green is a bit too dark so under certain lighting you can't really see uh, just that depth of that green on there but they do also have a really awesome feature which is on a lot of the mid-range watches now is these hands they're half brushed and half polished which really does aid legibility um, and it looks fantastic i have to say so i really do recommend these seiko watches out of all their reissues they fit the best in my opinion and if you can get your hands on one of these for around under 500 pound or around the 500 pound don't hesitate pull the trigger you will not be disappointed now we are nearing the end and moving on to the last two so these uh watches uh i'd say they, they are my grail purchases because i got these uh, again at the back end of last year i did do a short video on both uh, where i did the unboxing and you know i remember saying that um this mm300 was a consolation prize because in fact i wanted to get the mm600 but i couldn't have been uh, more wrong because um now that i've had them both for a few months uh, and i will be doing a follow-up video on both these watches um the mm300 stands alone right it can stand its own ground against this mm6 um while it, again it's bigger but it fits my wrist perfectly fine um it's a solid solid dive watch guys and the way i see this mm300 it's you know the dive watch personified or a dictionary definition of what a diver should look like uh, very robust it's a monoblock case it has a you know 8b a second movement um solid you right i'm not a huge fan of the bracelet and as i said mostly circles do have small issues um but i love the clasp on this i mean that ratchet clasp uh yeah you could use that all day um just lovely clicks great function as well the watch is so well weighted it definitely does let you know you're wearing a big heavy duty uh dive watch now with these m300s again there's so many iterations um i prefer this one the black uh, you can't go wrong and then it has the, it's got the prospect x on the crown but it still has the marine master text on the dial um so yeah lovely watch and again i got it at a very good price so still under what the market average is um so for me these are very smart purchases you know by no means you know you don't have to spend a lot uh, to get a lot if that makes sense and again for what this is um there really isn't much comparison between this and a lot of the other watches in this particular range so that takes me on to the mm600 um while this is my most expensive purchase and no doubt it is a grail watch uh for me anyway um you know you're looking at a spring drive movement that is what sold it and then aside from the movement was just the sheer looks i think you know let me take that back the looks sold it to me first and foremost the spring drive was an added bonus uh i mean looks wise 
you can't get any more tool watch than this. Those hex Allen keys on the end of those end links, they make the watch. Then you've got this sawtooth style bezel. Then you've got this hefty watch. Look at that chunk on that. But again, it fits really good. I mean, no, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see me posting regularly with this watch on. Um, it's amazing. Full titanium. It's also got the ratchet clasp there as well. Um, but the, this being full titanium, just have a look at some of these, uh, you know, angles of finishing on this. Um, it's ridiculous to think that this is all titanium, crisp brushing. Uh, and as I said, that spring drive just makes it all worthwhile. So let me just give this a little spin so you can actually see the spring drive before I end that video. So that's winding away. And initially when you do first start putting power in it, spring drive will kind of spin a bit faster while it kind of gets the power in there, but then, and then it'll steady itself. So we can see the power reserve filling up and just take a look. And that is a true sweep guys. Zero takes a second, just one continuous sweep. And yeah, you could look at that all day. And this watch, right, even though it's discontinued, it's a bit older, the person I got it from, um, you know, he's also a subscriber of the channel now, he's on my Instagram, but he kept it in mint condition. Honestly, I'm the one that put marks on it, unfortunately, but yeah, oof, look at that. That is a dirty mark there, but you know, it happens when you do wear it, so that's why I don't try to wear it too much. Um, but yeah, this is just an amazing watch. This is, I think, the grail for when it comes to divers uh, from Seiko, because if you even look at the GS divers, they don't look as tooly as this. So that's my, oof, that was close. Yeah, so that is my watch collection, guys. And when it comes to Seiko divers, now I've shown you everything. I don't think there is anything else for me to get. Maybe a Captain Willard, but, you know, I'm not too sold on the design there. So I guess we'll see what uh, the future holds if I want to buy anything else. Uh, I do have my eye on a Grand Seiko now, so which is probably the logical step to take. So I'm keeping an eye for a sporty 39 or a 38 millimeter Grand Seiko, uh, preferably automatic or with the with the uh spring drive movement in there uh but yeah of course if i get anything else any new watches in i'll update the state of the collection at the end of the year so that's it for me today guys thank you as always for watching and i will see you on the next video